to expedite some time because I know you have heard these uh, uh, this passage of scripture talking about the Samaritan woman at the well. You heard it over and over. And if you haven't, then I am going to explain it. I'm not going to take for granted that you uh, have it. Now, I have a lot of paper up here, but I know I'm not going to get to it. But it was just so good to I just kept writing and writing. Let me get it in line. Just a lot of paper, but you know, at my age, since Pat was talking about Reverend Turner's having a birthday, I'm not too far behind me. So I have to type the words up so big that they stand out. And because I'll be fumbling with this little Bible trying to figure out. But that's where all the paper comes from. Amen. We're going to read from the fourth chapter of John. We're going to start at the seventh verse. There cometh a woman of Samaritan to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. But his disciples were gone into the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaritan unto him, how is it that thou being a Jew as drink of me, which I'm a woman of Samaritan, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritan. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest knowest the gift of God and who it is that says to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Excuse me. And the woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. The well is deep from whence then hast thou that living water. Thou art great than our, uh, I'm sorry, art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself? and his children and his cattle. Jesus answered and said unto her, whosoever drink of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. The woman said unto him, sir, Give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband, Jesus said unto her. Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou thus hast thine husband, and he whom Thou now hast is not thy husband. And that said, thus truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our father worshiped in this mountain, and ye says that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall. Uh, now, I'm going to put emphasis on this right here, starting at the 21st verse. Jesus said unto her, woman, believe me, the hour will come and when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what ye know that we worship for salvation is of the Jews. 
But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. 24 verse, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. You may take your seats. I read that so those of you that has not read before, then you kind of got an idea of what's going on. Because here, when Jesus was uh, at the well, this Samaritan woman came up in Samaritan and the Jew did not have no dealings with. Just like a day that we live in today, everybody has certain uh, nationality of people that they, they, they deal with. Sometimes people just deal with their kind and they just, and, and we can bring it down to family. Some families just deal with family. They don't go outside of their family. They'll speak to you and be nice, but they don't try to, you know, uh, uh, interact with you at all. They just, you know, uh, uh, interact with themselves. We even have a nationality called the Amish, Amish. And, you know, they, they interact with themselves mostly, but they are friendly if you see them out, you know, they'll talk to you, but they just mostly interact. So here, it was a reason, and I don't want to talk about the reason. I preached this sermon maybe six or seven times, and I've never preached it the way I'm going to give it to you today that the Lord gave to me. But here, it says that I'm going to use for a topic because I thought not didn't give one. If thou knowest the gift of God and who giveth the gift, just sincere, oh my goodness, I can't even get the word out. Just be sincere in asking God. Get it? If thou knowest the gift of God and who giveth the gift, just be sincerely ask God. Be sincerely ask God. That's the question. Here in the 10th verse, uh, that's what I want to put emphasis on. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God and who it is that says to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. And I, in the Old Testament, uh, a, a lot of the scriptures talked about how uh, the uh, uh, many verses spoke on if you thirst for God in the Old Testament, because when I run reference, there was about 10, 15 of them. But it speaks on in uh, uh, thirsting for God. And, and Isaiah 55 and 1 says, salvation, and I heard this this morning, through God's grace is free. Everyone that thirsts come to the water that he that hath no money come by and eat with no price. So salvation is free. I don't know if it came from uh, Missionary Kiki or uh, Sister Patty, but they were talking about salvation is free. You don't have to buy. So that means that no one should be without salvation when you realize that there's a free gift through Jesus Christ. God gave his son, his son gave his life that we might have, we could have the, be extended back to the tree of life that we can live. You can live here on earth as well as live eternal in heaven with God after you leave this world. I know there are a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, teaching out there. Even in this passage of scripture here, it runs me to a passage we're in that false prophets was 
prophesying something different. But we're living in a day and a time and nobody don't have to tell you. I know if you don't watch the TV, if you don't listen to the news, but no, everybody knows now by now that hatred is running rapid. And Satan is loose because Satan realized that his time is drawing near. He realized that, but the, the sinners, the saints, the backsliders, the believers, they, they ain't too keen yet that time is running out. They haven't really recognized that uh, uh, the, the, the sun is going down and night is just a, a, a few inches away. You ever seen in the morning, the sun is up out there bright and, and what the season that we're in now and the way they set the clock back, Round about eight o'clock, you're gonna see it getting a little dim. Round about, sometimes it'll stay up to about nine, nine thirty. Ten o'clock is good and dark. So life is the same way in the spirit that we're living in. And here in Isaiah 55, it says that you know salvation is free. If you thirst, if you want God, then it, it, it is, if you are sincere and seeking God, then you can find him because he's not he. He gave his son, his son gave his life that we all can have a right to the tree of life. And then it says that um, Psalms 42 and one says, as the heart passes after the water brook, so my soul after thee, O oh God. You know, God created us, and he created us for himself. He created us in his image and his likeness, and he blew his breath inside of us. He put a part of him inside of us. And we, we go from day to day, uh, uh, before we got saved, and there was a yearning, there was a, a, a void in our lives that we couldn't understand. And, and that's what's happening to our generation and to those that has not accepted Christ. There is a void there. And that void is longing to be connected back with God. And we know the story in Genesis, Adam and Eve seen and broke that connection because every evening in the cool of the day, God would come and visit Adam and Eve and, and he give them instruction. I don't want to go too far out there, but he give them instruction what to do and what not to do. They disobeyed God. When they disobeyed God, then that broke the connection with God and man. So that's the reason why God gave his son. And he came back to join us together with our creator and with our maker. That's the reason why his son died. That's why we are talking about celebrating a, a, a Pentecost a Sunday. We just celebrated resurrection. Some of you call it Easter. Jesus died and he rose and he got up. He got up that we might could be connected back to our creator. So we find, as I was young, I was a boy. And you know what? Most of the time you do everything you can trying to fulfill that boy. But knowing that when only way you can fulfill that void is to, what's brother, uh, uh, the teacher said this morning, you got to make a commitment. <laughs> Deacon Anthony was talking about commitment and submitting your life to God because you will never fulfill that void with nothing else on this earth but accept the Holy Ghost. That's the only way you can fill that void. You can't, you, you, you'll never buy enough liquor. You'll never find enough women. You'll never you'll work yourself to death trying to get rich. All of these things of the world you may accomplish, but you will never fulfill that void because only 
through Jesus Christ that you will fill that void because that part of God is longing to be that with his father. So that's the uncomfortable that you are riding out. And it doesn't mean it, it, it's no age limit because we got people that are 60, 70, 80 years old have not accepted Christ and they're still trying to fulfill that void. So if we don't teach our young children while they are young, then we lose, and that's what's happened to this generation because the world system is offering. They don't hesitate to offer and to demonstrate and to show that uh, we got something that you, 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 you might try to fulfill that goal. They don't know what it is themselves. So that's the reason why it is very important that we that are baptized believers in Christ be witness to the world, be the light to the world to let them know that the void that you have, whatever you are seeking, whatever you have committed to on the outside is no way comparison to the void that God can fill with the Holy Ghost. So that's, that's, that's where your appetite is. That's what you're hungry. That's what you long for. You know, you think it's in food. Some people think it's in food. You know, they'll eat themselves till they just leave this world. Because every time they get upset, every time they feel the urge, they, 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 it's called a glutton spirit. They go and eat. But they find out one day when they look in the mirror, I have eat myself now out to my grave, and I still have not fulfilled that void. That void is there, whether you recognize it or not. And it says that... Uh, uh, I, I read the scripture, Psalms 41 and 2. I just pulled out two. And it says, as the heart pants after the water brook, so my soul after God, oh, oh God. God is the fountain of life. Psalms 36 and 9. And it says, in he would I bring living water that could ever, forever quench one's thirst of God. That's the only way is accepting Christ. Now here, Jesus met this Samaritan lady, woman at the well. And uh, the woman, I want to see if I want to go here. No, not right now. I want to read it first. It says in the 21st verse, that's the 10th, that's the 10th verse that I brought out just then. Now I want to bring out 21. Jesus said unto her, woman, believe me, the hour coming when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. Now, what Jesus was saying, because he was a Jew, and he was going to be the one to come and deliver salvation to the people. But I want to show you something right here. Now, when Jesus said that to the woman, because back when I back up, you read, you remember she asked him when he told her, when he was asking her a question, go get your husband. Then she asked him, are you greater than our father that gave us this well and all of them that drunk for, drunk, drank from the well? And our father worship, listen, she says, our father worship in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Now, let me, let me bring this out. What happened here? She found out because you remember she and when he told her to go get a husband and she said I don't have one he said you said well <laughs> because you had five and the one you got don't belong to you I want to show you something right here and when I read this it reminds me of my great grandson and some of you all when I bring it out you're gonna realize that you got kids 
or you got young children in your home. Now, when Jesus asked her that question, she said, I perceive that you are a prophet. But let me tell you what she done right here. In the 21st, she switched the subject. Because see, Jesus started opening her up. So she switched, she switched the subject. And Alex will do that. I, when I'm getting on Alex, Alex, uh, I, Alex say, Granny, Granny, look, look over. There. I said, we ain't talking about that. We ain't talking about that. We talking about this right here. Look me in my eye. Granny, look. Granny, pass, won't pass, won't pass. When I see this, I say, mm -hmm. when Jesus asked that question to her, told her to go get a husband, and she turns around, and she says, y'all make sure you're listening. Don't, don't miss this one. She says, our father worship in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where we ought to worship. See, she switched because he was getting into her business. And you remember the topic, if you go back, it says, Jesus, there was a need that he go through Samaritan. He went because there was a need. So here, when he asked her that question, because let me tell you one thing, you can't outsmart Jesus. You can outsmart Sister Turner, Reverend Turner, and all the other preachers and teachers and everybody, even your mom and daddy, you can outsmart them sometimes. <laughs> but you can't outsmart Jesus. Because it says, when she asked that question, Jesus turned that, he went right back and picked it up. He didn't leave it. He went right back and picked it up. He said, when the woman brought up a popular theological issue, the correct place to worship, but Jesus turned the conversation back to her personal needs. There's an S on there. Need. That means she had more than one problem. <laughs> he, she, he asked her to go get a husband. Then she starts talking about what her father done. And he turns back and say, mm -mm. he turns right, right back around and put it right. We're going we to talk about this because this is the reason why I came through Samaritan because you got some needs, you got some issues. It's not that in the church today. We have people that come to the house of God. Sunday after Sunday, month after month, year after year, and been sitting. And the word of God has been coming for because you got some issues. The congregation people got some issues that sit out there. But you know what? You cover it up because then you start pointing fingers. If it wasn't for so-and-so, I would be in church. If so-and-so happened to hurt my feeling, then I would be on this, or I'd be doing this. And the Lord showed me this. He said, look, 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 right here, right here. This is, this is where the problem is. I come. If you thirst for me, if you want me, if you want to fulfill that void, then you got to be sincere. You got to be honest. You got to be honest with yourself because you can, you can dress it up. You can paint it up. You can wig it up. You can shampoo it up. You can doll it up. But God knows the heart. He knows where you are. He, it does not just happen when you hear the word of God. When somebody is, 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 is bringing forth the word of God and you're sitting under the word of God, that didn't just uh, perhaps. You didn't just perhaps put your clothes on because if God had not stirred your heart, you could be on the fish bank. You could be somewhere on the beach. But God is, is, is drawing you because there's a void in your life and you keep covering it up and say, it's okay. You know, when the word of God come forth, and that's what happened right here. When God said there was a need that he go through Samaritan, and when he, you see the Bible say you have to be wise to win souls. So you can't out wise God because he's all knowledge. He's all knowing. He's everywhere at the same time. So the thing of it is, we can't fool God. But we might can fool people when we put on our clothes and we come to the house of God. 
The Bible said, be more ready to hear than to offer up sacrifice as food. So don't just come in and sing and shout and, 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 and just feel a, a, get a good feeling and go out the door knowing that there is something inside of you that is eating away. When the word of God is coming forth, then you realize and you accept the word and say, it's me. Uh, when a couple of Wednesday night, I think uh, Deacon Gunn made a statement. I was so glad because I've been waiting on that statement. I can't make it for you. But out of all the teaching, out of all the word of God that you have got, you got to come clean. You got to be real with God. You can't cover it up. Because it's like a seed, and it will keep festering and festering. And I'm going to tell you something. What's going on in the world today, if, if, if those that has been in the house of God and been there for years, have been there for months, and if you haven't come clean with God, if you haven't made it real, if you haven't made that commitment to God, because, listen, it's free. Nobody should be without it. You don't have to buy this. You don't have to pay for this. It's free. If you want some groceries, you got to have some money because you go to that grocery store. It won't be like the man that did the other day. Me and my husband's in there. He, he, I, I think that's his last time doing that because they got the eyes on him. He got his stuff and walked out the door and the bump was saying, bump, bump, bump. He knew, he knew to turn around and go back, come back in that store. Everybody looking like he's gone. <laughs> she said, yes. And that's the second time he done that. So I think he's marked. But what I'm saying, the word of God, the love of God is free. It's free. Anthony was happening on that. The love of God is free. And you can't buy the love of God. You can't steal the love of God. You got to come clean. You got to realize. You got to take your finger. You got to look in the mirror and say, it's me. It's me, oh God. Stand in the need of you. And when you do that, then God promised through your word. I read the two scriptures that he will come just for your asking, just for you being sincere. He will come into your life. Because it is the only way. It, there is but two places, heaven or hell. There's two people in business, God and the devil. So it's your freely choice to choose who you want to live for, who you want to serve. Because as I was saying, the night is coming, the door is closing to the Gentiles. And it behooves us to get in a hurry because once that door closed, can't nobody open that but God. And that's the reason why, because he loves us. We're his creation. He don't want us outside the door. Just like no parent want to see their child outside the door. But you can't make them when they get to a certain point. All you can do is pray for them. That's all you can do. So what as prophets, as pastors, as teachers, as ministers is saying from the pulpit today, today is the day of salvation. And it's free. It's free. Because we, we, we did a class uh, study on last week. Let, let, me, let me stick with this. Let me stay with this right here. It says, wherefore do I worship was it says, when she said that about when she went back and was talking about her father's worship, it sent up a smoke signal to uncover her deepness need. Jesus brought her back to how do I worship and whom helps will you need to know how to worship? That means you got to have the Holy Ghost. Is in, in the verse 21 through 24, I want you to don't miss that because sometimes we're already in the presence of God and God is speaking, 
but then we allow different things to deter our attention. You know what? The Satan right in the house of God will cause you to miss when God is speaking. Because you know what? He'll let one thing happen. And, you, and, your, and your eyes and everything is gone to that way. And that's the time that God is talking to you. Just like he was talking to her, told her to go get a husband. Then she's going to start bringing up, well, our fathers worship him. Now, now wh where do we worship? And you know what? I remember when Mary and Martha and Jesus stopped by their house. They invited him to come to, to their house. And Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet. And Martha was in the kitchen cooking, and she, she was jealous. And she came in there, and she says, Jesus, uh, Mary should come in the kitchen, I'm paraphrasing, and help me fix the food. And Jesus looked up and says, Martha, you're coming about a lot of things. What he meant was, you got, you got a lot going on. Mary choose to sit at my feet, which it will be a prophecy unto the world. And that's another whole preaching right there. But see, she, she, Mary was sitting at his feet. Martha had problems because Martha comes in and say, uh, uh, make Mary come in. Mary, you need to come in the kitchen with me. And she said, you got a lot of problems, Martha. There's a whole lot going on in your life. And sometimes there's a whole lot going on in, in, in your life. And right at the time God is talking to you and speaking to you, something will take your attention that you don't hear God. But then when things get tough and things get rough, then you want to accuse God. You know, just like the devil walked in and say, oh, why well, have all that? I cannot laugh in his face. I'm, I'm, I'm about 75 years old. I've been serving God ever since I was 18. I, God spoke to me when I was six years old. Can a fool tell me there ain't no God? Didn't I tell you? He could have told me my name wasn't George Down and I would have say, well, I don't know. Uh, my brother, he, he named me. He dead and gone. My mama dead and gone. But he can never tell me that I don't know God because me and God has had a one-on-one, -on -one, a one-on-one -on -one contact. <laughs> Glory to God. So nobody can never take that away. And I made God a promise. I don't care if I end up in hell. I'm going to serve you till I die. I said, if I'm at the bottom of pits of hell, I said, I'm going to tell a dying world that you are real, that you are true to your word, to your promise. And you know what? I, I, that was just a time of Brother Anthony, I was going through. <laughs> Glory to God. What you say it was? L long suffering. I thought that trial would never end. But I tell you one thing, I held on to God's unchanging hand. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. So the devil can't come and tell me that maybe this is all. Well, let me tell you one thing. I ain't coming out of it. I stood up and told him, I said, I tell you what, I'm going to serve God till I die. I ain't going to listen to you because I know that there's a God. So the thing of it is, we miss the opportunity when God is speaking. We miss it because we allow the devil to strike our attention. Because you know why? He wants you to go to hell and burn with him. He don't want you to hear it. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. His only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him should not perish. We, that, there is no reason for nobody to go to hell. Because God gave his only begotten son. That's the reason why the scripture says, he says to the woman, here, woman, believe me, the hour coming, and when ye shall neither in this mountain, not yet in Jerusalem, worship the Father. You know what he was saying? You're going to get to the point when you receive the living water. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be in the church to worship me. Glory to God. Because you know why? There's going to be a change in your life. I am everlasting water. No matter where you go, no matter where you end up, I am still there with you. So you don't have to wait to come to the house of God to have a form of God denying the power there. But you, when you get the real, that's why I said, if you know who has the gift, then all you got to do is be sincere in asking God for it. Because when God got, when, when Jesus got through with this woman, uncovering her 
and he finished talking to her about her needs, her wants, and where she should be and who she should accept when he said, but the hour coming and now is when the true worshiper shall, shall, and it say maybe, the true worshiper shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeks such to worship him. God is calling, he is nugging on the people to worship him. And worship just don't mean that you got to come to church, run up and down the aisles, scream and holler, all of that. But when you have the true worshiper on the inside of you, then you will be the light to the world. You see what the world is doing? And do you see where the saints is? We still got to come back and preach a foundation on Jesus Christ for people that's been sitting in the house of God 10, 15, 20 years or more. We got to lay a foundation. It shouldn't be. I mean, the thing of it is, the ones that's been in church, we got some that's gone. They done gone on to sleep. But the ones that's in there, and you've been there at least five years, you should be producing fruit. You should have some babies. You should have some chicks. Uh, 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 as the chicken, the hen, come out and have all them little chickens falling behind her. When you come in the door, you should have you some babies coming behind you. There's somebody you don't witness to because they are looking for the light. The world is looking for the light and they can't find it. So you know what they're doing? They're making up their own light. They're making up their own rules. It says from 21 to 24, how does the Holy Ghost spirit, the Holy Spirit, I love ghosts, help us worship the Holy Spirit praise for us? Did you not know that the Holy Ghost prays for us? He prays for us. Romans 8, 26 says, likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmity. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Holy Spirit himself make intercessory for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. It also, let's stay a little bit right there with the Holy Ghost uh, uh, praying for us. You hear, you hear brother, y'all went here in Sunday school. Brother Apple was there this morning. Him and his gang. On their way going to do what they wanted to do. But he took a little time and said, God, don't let us get killed. Now, he know he was going to do what he wanted to do. He didn't have no Holy Ghost, so y'all can, can, imagination can run. Whatever you want to wait, let it go. Here's somebody. Now, this is a witness. This morning in Sunday school, I was going to do what I wanted to do. But because I had a foundation, somebody that made me come to the altar and get on my knees and say, Jesus, I did have enough sense to say, Lord, don't, I know we're finna go over here, this, this juke joint. I know we're finna go over here and yeah, probably get drink some liquor. I know we're finna go over here and we got our peace in our, we got our peace in our pocket. But Jesus, please don't let us get killed. But the scripture says, how does the Holy Ghost help us worship God through prayer? Because we are his, good God Almighty. We belong to him. He created us. And when he created us, he loves us. And he don't want us to miss what he has for us. So he intercedes, Jesus intercedes for us. He, he, he stands between us and God. And say, not yet, not yet. You know, we talked about the parables. He, he said, I, I, I know they ain't worth nothing. I know they ain't even worth your, your dying. But, but, but let me dig around them. Don't, 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 don't kill him. Let, I, 
I, I see, I see that there's a seed in him. And he's going he gonna, he gonna to be at Bellevue one morning and he's going to be trying to preach your word. He's going to be trying to teach your word to, uh, to a people. So don't, don't, don't kill him. Yeah, he, 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 your prayer might have work. You still here? I ain't kidding you. The, the scripture said God will be gracious to who he wants to be. You know, right now, we're looking at the TV, and we're seeing all this evil. And I know it grips your heart. It, it, it hurts because they are, they are babies. You know, everybody that got a grandchild got a baby. It, it runs through your mind. It could have been mine. And it don't have to be a baby. It could have been my teenager girls. That, that grips your heart. But let me tell you one thing. God said this is his world. He do what he want to. There's nothing surprise him. And think about that scripture. See, when we as Christians see this, we have to hurry up and get to the Bible. Because you know what? Now, if, if y'all didn't think it, I'm just going to be honest. I said, you know what? I ain't say me. I said, y'all have to go get a gun and just shoot them all. I said, oh, God, forgive me. Now, y'all, all of y'all saints. Y'all good. Y'all done pass me. You done pass me. You're good. You're good. I don't watch it. That's why I don't tell my husband. I don't watch that. Because that keeps me praying. That keeps me repenting. Because I ain't got there yet. So I run and got my word. And start praying for those evil ones. Because God said he created evil for his time, saints. See, this is what I want you to understand. The door is open for you. Because if you get walk out of here today and go to the grocery store and get shot, we won't have to worry because you know why? You got the Holy Ghost. You're going to live forever to be absent from this body. You got the opportunity to live forever with the Lord. But I want you to see it both sides. There's an evil world out there. And all we can do is pray for them. And there will not be one person on this earth that will leave here and never leave without knowing God. That's the reason why we have to cry loud. Spare not. Lift up your voice. Show my people their transgression. Show them that I love them. Show them that I'm praying for them. Show them that I, I, I made a way for them. Because you are my creation. You just imagine if you got children. You imagine. I don't care. I don't care if they make their bed in the deepest part of hell. But there's a part of you still there that loves and wants to protect them. And the only thing you can do is pray. So at that point, that's all you can do is pray. Because when they get to a certain point, ain't nothing else you can do but pray. But whatever happens, you have to realize I give it to God. I can't linger with this. That is happening out there, and, and not only there, but all around what we are seeing, there are people that won't be able to take that because they don't know God. They don't know he's real. They don't know quickly run to your word and, and drown yourself in your word because the best saint has to stay in the word of God to see that and look at it because you see children. But you know what? I don't worry about none of them because we are here God's creation and he know what he's doing. It's not a sleepless night. You pray that somebody get to those parents that perhaps they don't know God. Perhaps they know God and you just be there to encourage them because it's just a test and a trial that they are going through. Those kids were just in, in my words and in my heart. They were raised up to be at the age they were and God took them. God got them angels somewhere special. They're probably having a good time. And the parents is just wearing themselves to death. But, you know, God say he may be gracious to who he wants to be gracious to. And the thing of it is, I'm saying, God got them kids. That, that was his life that he blew in them. All he did was took it back. 
That's flesh that they see. But perhaps somebody will get saved. Somebody will deepen their relationship with God. It's already some, some of them hearts is failing. Some of them will be angry for the rest of their life. And they don't want to have nothing to do with God. Nothing that you say. But God know who he is after. And even the saints, it lets us know that we got to stay cultivated with God. We got to get closer with God because we don't know. We sing the song we said. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. You better know who holds tomorrow. You better make sure you know who holds tomorrow because once we get further down in this lesson, and y'all know I'm a teacher, and whenever I the Holy Ghost say quit, I'll just stop because I got Wednesday night. But listen what it said. It says that the Holy Spirit prays for us. Then it said it also teaches us the word of Christ. John 14, 26 says, but the comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. And that's what the Holy Ghost does. It comforts us in a time like that. Because it could have been our kids. It could have been ours. We're not exempt. But the thing of it is, when you got the Holy Ghost, that's the importance of having the Holy Ghost. When, when, when fiery docks, I said, boy, I don't know if that was a missile or what. You, I don't know what that was. That was a tummy bum. But the thing is spiritually to those people. But the thing of it is, the Bible tells us, it says in the 16th verse of Ephesians 6, it says, take ye the shield of faith, faith that you might be able to quench every fiery dot. That's the reason why we say it's going to only take the Holy Ghost. You walk around now in your much your body. You walk around now with your money in your pocket. You walk around now with your fine home. You walk around now and you got everything you want for. And you don't need God. But let me tell you one thing. God can send something that will drop you to your knees. God will send something that will make your heart melt in your body. If you don't have Jesus, an unchanging hand that will be there to comfort you. And I'm here to tell you, I know some things. I know God can comfort. I know God can take, I know God can wipe something out of your mind just like that. When that woman died in my car and everybody was talking, I had that wreck with Mother Maxine in that car. Everybody was talking. But you know what? Minister Kenny God was talking to. God was talking to. And that kept me because they said, even the policeman came to the house and was going to charge me for killing her. Took the ticket back that one policeman had gave me and wrote me another ticket. Took it back. Because he said, I'm going to get some money for the state. He was trying to build his, his ego. He was trying to build his power. He was trying to build his name. Because the lawyer said that was wrong for him to take that ticket. Because whoever wrote that ticket, he wasn't supposed to take your ticket. He took me, he said, where's the ticket? He took it, tore it up, wrote me a nut, and put on there. I had killed that woman. But let me tell you one thing. That Sunday, she sent for me and told me to come to the hospital. She said, George Ann, she said, whatever happens, baby, don't worry about it. God's got it. We both are saved. She said, and you don't accuse yourself. You begged me to put that seatbelt on, and I wouldn't. She says, so don't worry about that. Whatever happened, I wanted to tell you that. Well, she was doing fine. She was on her way home. And, and she fell dead. She dropped dead. <laughs> and, and, and I found out it wasn't the wreck, but they said I put her there because of the wreck. But it wasn't the wreck that killed her. They took the thing out of her arm that where she did dollars, 
And I've never known them to take them out. They always leave them there. They took it out and a blood clot went to her brain. And I've never known them. I've known Jean Tatum. She had five. I know another bo uh, men, uh, boy in our neighborhood. They never removed it because that was the danger of moving them that a blood clot. But they removed hers. But then they wanted to charge me and then everybody in the neighborhood was talking. Oh, look how calm she's taking that when she killed that woman. Or her husband called me. He said, baby, let me tell you something. That was your mama. He says, and they are here at my door begging me to sue you. He said, the policeman here bought me to sue you. He said, I ain't suing that girl. They, they were, that was our mama. They were buddies. He said, I'm not suing you and I'm not coming to court. They want me to come to court. But let me tell you one thing, God worked it out. <laughs> the, day that I, the day that I went to court, the policeman forgot to come and, 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 and Deacon Kimler didn't come. So the man said, where's her accusers? <laughs> And the lawyer said, she got none. He said, case dismissed. <laughs> so I'm telling you, God is in control. I don't care what the devil tries to put on you. God is in control. That's the reason why it's important that we have God. It's important. You can have everything in this life and don't have God. But a fiery dot can come and cause you to miss it. To miss it because some people they, they don't want to hear they don't want you to talk about God to them. Where was it? That was my baby. No, that wasn't your baby. God just lent. You see, we have to realize these are gifts that God give us. That God's gift, they take it when they want to. And it don't have to be tragedy. They can lay down, go to sleep, and, and, and don't even wake up. They call it crib syndrome. They died in the crib. But God, they did nothing past God. But the thing of it is, it's important, it's imperative that we have the Holy Ghost because we will not be able to make it what's coming upon us if we don't have the Holy Ghost. And it says God is love. And I done told you that all over, over and over again. Romans 5, 5 says, and hope make it not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who give unto us. And the 24th verse says, when Jesus says salvation come to the world through the Jews, he was not saying through the Jews only, but he was saying through him because he was a Jew. And when the lady, uh, when, the, when Jesus got through with the lady, uh, uh, the Samaritan woman, she went running through the city saying, come see a man, come see a man. That lets me know whenever you have fully committed to God and the Holy Ghost sets his kingdom up inside of you, you become a witness. You become a witness. You can't do nothing about witness when you look and see a dying world out there and you can't stop and say, Jesus is the way. Jesus is the light. He will help you get through this. We become, we're supposed to be witness unto him. It said, Jesus, a Jew, would the whole world find salvation. That's the only one you're going to find salvation in. That's the only one you're going to find peace in is through Jesus Christ, which is the Holy Ghost. You know, we've jumped, we've shout, we've spoken tongue, but let me tell you one thing. It's time to get down to the real thing. People sit in the church with knees. People sit in the church drowning on the inside with knees. And Jesus is saying today, I'm here. It's free. All you got to do is be sincere and ask. That's all you got to do is cry out to God. You don't have to be in a setting with nobody. You hear the word. You go home. You can make your bathroom. You can make your bathroom, your altar, and cry out to God. That's the kind of God that we serve. That's the, that's the reason why he said there was a need that I go through Samaritan. There's a need that I go through Bellevue. There's a need that I go through St. John. There's a need that I go through St. Baptist uh, Holiness. There's a need. And I'm crying out today. If you have a need, Jesus is the answer. He's the answer. And that's his word saying. 
Then I'm not going to get to the next page. But let me tell you one thing. There's something I'm going to read. I'm going to read, and I want you to know this. This lets you know the worth of God. And when the devil can confront you and say, it ain't all of that, it don't take all of that, then you can say within your heart, it takes that and more. Romans 12 and 2 says, and I'm not going I'm not, I'm not to get the teacher on this, because Kenny, what time is it? It says, Romans 12 and 2 says, be ye conformed, be, be, be ye not, let me get that, 12 and 2. Be not conformed, I can, I can quote it. I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, I want to put this in there. Let me tell you something. If you have not been transformed, if you have not met Jesus one-on-one, -on -one, then you have a form of God. Because when you meet him, there is a divine transformation. And you have to go through a process. You have to go through a process. It said, be not conformed to this world. So conformed to the world means you take on the world attributes. You size up with the world. You can fit in the world. But when you are are transformed by the renewing of your mind, then that means your appetite change. You have nothing to do for the world. You hate the world, but now you have been transformed by the renewing of your mind and you fall in love with Jesus. You take up his attributes. He says, when that happens, that means you become sincere that you want God. And when you become sincere that you want God, you turn the world loose, you accept him. And then he says, if you are sincere in seeking me, I will come in and I will bowl with you. I will make my home with you. I will be there in trouble time. I will be there when you need me. I will not turn my back on you because I love you. I love you enough to give my only begotten son and he gave his life that you might have a right to be connected back with me. That's all it's saying. So we have to go through a metamorphic stage. And that's a whole new teaching. We have to go through a metamorphic stage. So it's not just coming to church every Sunday. It's not just dressing up. You say you want God, then you got to a patch. You got to seek him. You got to go after him. You got the thirst for him. If you want water, what you do? You go to the fountain and get you some water. And you know what most people do? They substitute. When they thirsty, they'll go get coffee. When they thirsty, they'll go get a soda. When they thirsty, they'll go get anything besides water. Water is the only thing that will quench your thirst. Is not Jesus the living water? He's the living water. You're thirsty. You're running everywhere, looking everywhere, trying to seek God, all in the wrong places. You end up wrapped tied and tangled up with the world and with the devil because you are seeking the wrong place. And Jesus is saying, hey, you got plenty needs. It's not just one. You got plenty, plenty needs. And that is all that is important, that we have God. Now, let me read this right here before we go home. It says, John 4, 24. And I have just went through a whole lot, but you know what? I don't worry about it. If you come on that Zoom, I'm going to teach you. It says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. Deacon Anthony, if you hear that sound, don't run to catch me because it's a spirit that's going to go up. And when you reach, your hand going to go through my spirit. Your hand going to go through Sister Ella's spirit. Your hand going to go through Sister Patty's spirit. Your hand going to go through all the saints' spirit, and you're going to have nothing but rags. 
That's all you're going to catch because we ain't carrying these rags. I thought that I would throw that in there. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We got to grab a hold to the truth, saints. We got to grab a hold to the word because he is the word. And if we're going to worship him, it ain't just going to be in Bellevue. Glory to God. We're going to worship him on the mountaintop. We're going to worship him if we, the Bible said, if you make your bed in hell, he'll be there. If you take wings and you try to fly to the utmost parts of the world, he's there. Where can we go to get away from God? Nowhere. So you might as well stop running. You might as well settle down. You might as well stand still and hear the word of the Lord and accept him and get ready and let's go home. Good God Almighty. Glory to God. I'm, going, I, I'm, I'm skipping a whole lot of pages, but this page here, I don't want to skip. Glory to God. John 4, 24. It says, John, give three descriptions of God. He is a spirit, and it says, John uh, 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 4 and 8, says he is, he is love, the light. It says, John, 1 John, I'm sorry, 1 John 4 and 8, he is the light. 1 John, yeah, 4 and 8, he's the spirit. 1 John, let me slow down. 1 John. Five and one, God is a supernatural being who is invisible and without a body. Now, y'all just stop doing what you're doing, everybody. Just listen to this, because this is what it's worth. This here why I set your soul on fire. It says, you, 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 you're, finding out some, you're finding out something about who God is. You ain't just serving a mere man. You're serving a supernatural, all-powerful forgiving, saving man. It says, God is a spiritual being who is invisible. Brother Anthony, can't catch me. And without a body, he is a divine person who reveals himself in perfect intellect, emotion, and will. He is the source and personification of all mature and spiritual life. So there's life. You can't find it nowhere else. I don't care where you go. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you try to take on. You will never find life. Glory to God. Except you catch a hold to this uh, 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 unchanging hand. He is self-existent. He is eternal in relationship with time. Let me tell you something. You ain't got no time. Because he holds time. And you know what? He got time period. <laughs> and whenever that time period comes, it just moves into what God has already spoke. It's going to be, we can't pray it and stop it. You can't beauty yourself up. You can't flat your little eyes. You can put your eyelashes on. You can put your weave in. You can go get you some false teeth. You can bear them. But you will never stop the time of God. You hear me? He says, glory to God. Ah, he is at self-existing, he is eternal in relationship to time. He is unlimited in relationship to the immunity of space. Can't go nowhere and, and think you're getting away from God. He is immutable and his nature is he is immutable in his nature. He is unity of all existing and he is consistent in his being, that is, he compounds in accurate facts of his nature and attributes as they are revealed to us. First reference, Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. And the primary reference is John 4, 24. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hear me? So stop playing. Put away your phony face. And come real with God. Because he's a spirit. 
And if you're going to move into him, you got to move in the spirit because he don't deal out of the spirit. Because if he dealt out of the spirit, would none of us be here today? Thank God for Jesus that hides us from God. So we have to be real. That's what I'm telling you. You might as well come real. Glory to God. Come real because he sees and he's warning and he's saying the door is constantly closing to the Gentile. And once that door closed, Sister Turner can pray all she want to pray. And all the prayer warriors can pray all they want to pray. Ain't nothing we can do about that though. He have given us the time. He have given us the word to accept him because he said, today is salvation. Today is promised salvation. You can shout the victory today by accepting Christ. And I'm going to put up all these papers because when I start studying, I just keep going. And I know I can't preach at all, but let me tell you one thing. If you are sincere, and you know the gift of God is eternal life, then all you got to do is be sincere and ask God, who's faithful and just to every promise. You know, saying it's tired out, it's time out for a preacher to preach until you get up and holler, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they say, what did the preacher preach about? I don't know, honey, but we were shouting up in there today. It's time to bring it plain because time is running out. And there won't be nobody that stand before God and say that they didn't hear. Because God's not going to let you get out of here until you hear it. If you have to hear it from a rooster that crow every morning and wake you up and tell you to pray. And you get up and go to the uh, uh, stove and fix you a big breakfast. And the rooster is saying, get up and go for work. You say, oh, it's time to get a cup of coffee. Listen a little closer. Listen a little closer. I'm telling you, young people, you know, I, I'm glad, I, you know, in one way I'm sorry, and another way I'm glad that you have the opportunity to hear Christ about Christ. I know you got your future, and I know you have already mapped your life out. But if God was to come tomorrow, if he was to come tomorrow, let me tell you what he said. And I didn't understand that. If you're on the mountaintop, don't come down. <laughs> if you're in the field, don't come down. If you're on the ball court, don't come up, don't run home. And seek mama. Because there should be nothing in our life that's more important than being ready to go back with God. There's no excuse. It's free. You don't have to pay for that. This is turn. I ain't, I ain't done this yet. Well, you know what? There's a lot I ain't done. I ain't worrying about. <laughs> a lot I ain't going to do. Because <laughs> you know why? I'm pushing 75. And I'm like this, Sister Laura Jane. When I don't feel like doing it, I go get in my chair. I feel like I deserve that. And then when I get me a little strip, I go back and do Sister Shirley. At 75 years old, I, mean, I, I received Christ at the age of 18. So you know what? It's not over. I ain't going to throw in the towel. I know all that ain't good English, but that's okay. I'm not going to throw in the towel. But I'm going to work. And I'm going to serve God, and I'm going to hold fast, and I'm going to believe him until I hear him say, well done. Sister Shirley, be faithful. Just be faithful, baby. <laughs> be faithful. And there's a crown that has been waiting for you to crown him when we all crown him. Amen. Be just be, just, 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 you know, Sister Elba, our steps getting slow. We, I used to, I seen myself run these eyes. And dance as long as the young people dance. Then I'll dance them. I still got to dance. <laughs> but you know what? I'd rather make sure that the people behind me hear this word before I leave from him. That there won't be no excuse. 
they didn't hear God. Because it's time out for people uh, 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 playing with folks that stand behind this pulpit. It's time out. Tell the people the truth and let them make the decision. And then you can go to sleep. Because, see, I, am, I, I ain't worrying about no salary. I got a house and Reverend Turner work. And I can eat. Light bills paid. And I don't need no more clothes. I'm, I'm giving some of them away in that closet. Closet full of clothes. I ain't buying no more clothes. I told my husband, I'm old enough now. You can see a little food dropped up. Let's take a little rag, whack it off, and go to church. Pray the Lord. That's where you get. Pray the Lord, say. Pray the Lord. I ain't worried about a, a, a closet full of hats. Do you see me wear? I can get my hats off when I came to Bellevue that I could get down there with you and teach you the way to Christ. Now, all the women still sitting on the side, dogged up. That's all right. That's fine. That's what they want to do. I ain't, I ain't throwing no snares at nobody. But I come to work because I sent you there to work. And all that stuff weigh you down. Why dress up? Now, come in and pull it off to the side. But I thank God, thank you. Hear this, hear this, hear this. I stay in God's face because we in a crucial time. I stay there because I want to hear God speak to me. I want to live what he want me to live. And I want to be able to help you. I wouldn't help you and then be a fool and miss it myself. I want to help myself first, and then I can help somebody else. So this was very important for the devil to walk in my room and say, all of that ain't even worth it. I laughed in that fool's face. I bust out laughing. I said, you know what? You're about to be the biggest fool I ever met. You go walk in my room, but my Bible open, tell me, and I'll take all of that. I said, well, I enjoy it. I said, but you answer this question, where will you spend eternity? Answer that on your way out my house. Amen. Let us stand. And let me tell you one thing. The day is Sunday. And if you got somewhere to be the next 20 minutes, they're going to do it. But if you don't have nowhere to be and you want Christ in your life, I'll I be here. I'll be, I be here. Everybody else, can, they tired, they go on, bathroom break, whatever. But let me tell you one thing. This is serious because you can stop by the store just to get you a coma ice cream and never end at home. That's how serious it's getting out there. And let me tell you one thing, Saint. God ain't give us the spirit of fear. He has given us love, power, and a sound mind. And this is not our home. We're going to leave him. And you know what? Every time one goes, I said, they don't have to go through what we left back here to go through with. I don't know. I could not make it to Greensboro. But let me tell you one thing. You shout the victory. Because you can say one thing about it. I, I plumbed the line. Like this said, I ain't dotted every I and crossed every T. But I tell you one thing. I sure been trying. I've been trying. Because that stuff that's going on out there, God said, don't allow that to distract you. I got this. Did not he say that? Don't let the world system distract you. Now, I'm going to tell you something. That's an army. That's an army with force that's building up that thinks they're going to come against the church. I, one was on there bold enough to say, y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Well, let me tell you one thing. You ain't seen nothing yet either because God said he is the one that's going to revenge all of this. We leave it to me. I know how to take care of it. So all we do is pray, be ready to get out of here and give God the glory and be a witness that he is true to every promise that he made. And he promised us he would take care of us. Glory to God. We got a resting place. We got a resting place. Joy, peace, all of them uh, uh, things the brother named today. Glory to God. Glory to God. You don't have to come out your seat. You can stay right in your seat and examine your soul. You know where you are. You know what you need. If you don't have God, you need God. You need God. 
feel with the Holy Ghost. Because it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. But God has promised us that he will be our peace. He will be our comforter. No matter what we go through with. As I was telling you. I know God to be true. Because there's three things that happened in my life. That I had to go to God. I said, God, I need you. And instantly, God took that wreck right out of my face. Because, you know, when you have something like that, you see it over and over and over. I seen it three times, and I said, God, I need you. And he wiped it. I didn't see it no more. There was a bus wreck at our church. And the car, I was in the car, and the bus was behind us. And they changed the road. And we didn't know it. And the bus was going to come in and go on top of us. But instead, the guy swung out. And when he did, the bus rolled down an embankment. And we stood at the embankment praying, God, save those people, save those people. Not one died. One girl got hurt. The, the star that went through the bus stuck her in her leg. And I went home, I said, God, I need you. I can't, I cannot take this. I say, for one thing, it missed us. But the bus rolled down. And I seen that bus over and over and over. I prayed and instantly God moved. I know God is real. I know he's real. I come close to having an accident on 85 going up. I panicked because I seen smoke. Looked like smoke was coming in my car and I panicked. I said, oh my God, I didn't look or nothing. I took off and the man just didn't miss me. He missed me. That rolled before my face. I said, God, I need you. I need you. So I know God will remove things that we cannot take over and over and over. If you just give it to me, just give it to me. I don't know what you will face. But if you got the Holy Ghost, all you got to do is say, God, I need you. I can't take this. He's our burden bearer. So he takes it. So whatever you're going through, all you got to do is say, God, I need you. I need you today. Father, in your precious name, Jesus, Lord, we thank you for you. We thank you for our life. And we thank you for being God. We thank you for loving us enough to keep speaking to us. You are God. There are millions, there are trillions, there are billions of people. But God, you chose us. You're tucking after us. And we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for loving us enough. We didn't just have to be here. If it was our choice, we would be out in the world. Because the world paints a good picture. But oh God, we thank you for showing up and revealing your word unto us that paints a better picture, knowing that after this life, we have eternal life that you have promised us. There's joy in serving you. There's peace in serving you. No matter everything that we go through, we may not understand. And we might not see the victory then. But because our confidence and our hope is in you, you make it right. And we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. We have loved ones that has turned their back and walked away. But we thank you for the Holy Ghost that makes intercession. But we don't know how to pray. But we thank you for the seed that has been sown inside that the promise and the promise 
that our seed and our seed seed would be blessed. We say thank you today. We speak healing in this room today to mind, body, even souls. We speak healing and we thank you for your word that is true. We believe and we accept it. And our bodies line up according to your word, according to your will in our lives. We say thank you. Thank you for the strength that you have given us day by day. We pray, God, for those that hearts hurt today. We thank you that you're still God. This is your world, and you spoke it into existence by your word. And we honor your word today. And we just bless your name. And we give you thanks and we give you glory. We pray today those that are in our room, those that have heard the word today, that it not fall on stony ground, but it fall on good ground. We pray, God, that it spring up. Glory to God. Everlasting. That we be the light, that we be the saint that you have chosen for this day and this hour. And we stand up in a world as a city. We pray, God, that you bring healing all over this land. For those that stand behind them and preach to your people and teach your people, we pray, God, that they line up, that they be first partakers of your word. Some may have to repent. And go back and receive the Holy Ghost. Go through the metamorphic stage. We thank you. And we bless you. We give you glory. And we give you honor. And your word. You say heaven and earth may pass away. But we'll stand forever. We're standing on your word. That means we're standing in victorious. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor, and we say thank you. Amen. Amen.